All right, everybody. It is six o'clock and all is well. You're in Mason, Arizona. Yay. Okay, you want to stand up and we'll have the opening prayer. Does anybody want to volunteer to do that besides me? Tom is going to do our opening prayer. Tim, I'm sorry. See, you know, I'll I'll always be Tom. Remember Tom Moore? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. He was the uh, superintendent of schools and the uh, attorney general. Yeah. Good job, too. Nice job. Sorry about Tall that. Tall guy. Well, you gotta get it she wrong. She really knows everything. All right, please uh, pray with me. Lord God Almighty, thank you for the people in this room, for the use of this building and the house of worship. Couldn't be better for God-fearing people who are God and country people and want this country to move ahead. In the, in the months ahead, we know how much work we have to do to make it on Election Day. And God willing, and with your help, we'll succeed. And our nation will once again be on the path to righteousness and the kind of country that anybody in this world would want to live in. Thank you, God, for everything you do for us. Help us this day and every day. And give us the power and strength to work through this election and make us win. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you very much for coming up. Jerry would like to have 30 seconds. Do you think he can make it in 30 seconds? I can be heard. I'm going to read from the book. Oh, he's going to read from the book. That's good. Just so that everybody knows that we're all paying attention to the same things on YouTube. Okay, you, you need, do we have people who forgot what Jerry needs tonight? So. Oh, well, does this help? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to read. This is quick. This is uh, Romans. Uh, Thanks, Jeffrey. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. That's what I wanted to read. Good. Thanks. Okay, you know what? And that verse, those that are called according to his purpose. Sometimes there's his purpose in your life really, really surprises you because never in my wildest dreams did I ever imagine I would be doing this in my retirement for the last 10 years. Yes, I am. Okay, so we want to be sure that we um, do that. So. Tonight, we want to also welcome Bob Hawthorne. Uh, he came here with Tim back about a year and a half or two years ago when we did the national popular vote discussion. You all remember what the national popular vote is? Okay, so if the Democrats end up getting elected, your, rep your representative form of government is not going to be very representative anymore. It's going to be more of a straight out democracy because that's what they'll do. That's one of the consequences of a voting Democrat. So anyhow, um, I invited Tim up because he was with us last summer, I believe, talking about, do you remember what you were talking about? Well, I talked about a couple of things. One was my book. You're talking about some of the things that did. Oh, well, let me announce you, you can come up. But anyhow, you all enjoyed him so much then, and we used to have, remember, those were the days when we had 35 or 40 people at a meeting, so anyhow, they'll, we'll be back. Here's Tim. Hey. <laughs> Tim Orr. Thank you, Sheila. You know, you really should applaud her because she does so much work. Yes, you know, you would never know she's 30. It's unbelievable. 
She really does. I mean, you've seen her always. I mean, at state convention, all the stuff you do, every, you're always on everything. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, my friend Bob and I are here tonight to talk to you about something we think is important, and it's what we're hoping you will take back to your friends, your neighbors, your other Republican friends, independents. I don't know about Democrats. Bob was saying on the way up here, I'm going to steal this from you, Bob. He said, he said, you know, if you could talk sense with any Democrat, there wouldn't be any Democrats. <laughs> but you can't. And then I, I saw somebody scrawl in the restroom in here. Stopped in there. We, we just drove up from Scottsdale, and it said, "If you what did it say? It said it looked like it said if you put a Democrat's brain on the edge of a razor blade, it would look like a, a BB rolling down the freeway." <laughs> well, you you know what they're saying about us tonight. You got to have a little humor, otherwise it's humor. So we don't we don't want that. So. I've been a lifelong Republican since, well, for 45 years I've been working in the party. So, and most, almost all my adult time I've been an active Republican. We both, I, Bob and I both come from LD23, that's Scottsdale, Fountain Hills, and Rio Verde. So we have about 400 PCs, we're one of the largest uh, districts in the state, one of the largest districts in the whole United States uh, for Republicans. So we got a crew, we're doing stuff, and you'll see our LD23 people, LD23 people, one of them's secretary right now of the party, one of them's treasurer of the party. So we're out there, we're, we're on everything. I'm not running for anything, Bob doesn't run for anything, we just run to encourage Republicans to be Republicans and be who they are. Uh, we're both God and country people, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight to talk to you about what we're, a new thing. And I will mention, since you said the, um, the national popular vote is is not going to be on the ballot. So we're very pleased about that. Two things are, you know, the Red for Ed is back. That made it. And uh, unfortunately, recreational marijuana is going to be on it too, which we all knew it was going to be on there. So there's still people fighting that, and, and, and we'll continue all the way down the line. <clears throat> I think it's a travesty for children, myself. I think it's adults can do whatever they want, but, you know, it's just... It's bad for kids. It just is. I mean, I don't know how we could do it. But nonetheless, it's going to be on the ballot. But the good news is that um, the Electoral College is not. They're not going for that, the national popular vote. And I think one of the reasons is um, because Bob, myself, and others have been, Alex Molusky, running around the state the last year and a half going, this is what it is. Tell everybody, don't do it. And Bob, I will say, also was one of the guys, along with Jim O'Connor, who's running for the uh, corporate corporation commission, also an LD23 person, and he's up for the LD23 uh, grouping from the LD23 group for corporation commission. He and Bob Hawthorne were the two people that went to Andy Biggs when he was in the state senate and said, Andy, there's this thing called the national popular vote. It's already been passed in the Arizona House. We're here to make you understand what it is and stop it. Bob was one of the guys sitting across the desk along with Jim. They convinced Andy. Andy said, sounds to me like you're right. Put it in a drawer and never be seen again. We got some good people out there. But it's also people who aren't elected officials that move the needle, that make people see what's going on. Because the elected officials have so many things on their mind and, of course, always want to be reelected. So guys like Bob and I, we go around and we talk to other Republicans like Shirley and you saying, you know, we're here because we're here for the cause of conservatism, and we can talk to each other and encourage each other. So tonight's topic is about um, what that flag stands for up there, is about what we're doing with Republicans this year. And so we know what happened in the 2018 election when Governor Ducey got, what, 155,000 votes more, Bob? More than, than, more than Martha. Yeah, Martha. more than Martha McSally. So she didn't get those votes. So we had Republicans, or people supporting Republicans, voting, and they skipped her name. And the reason is, well, that wasn't their favorite candidate in the primary. Or she shouldn't have gotten appointed later. Or whatever, they don't like her today. But I'm here to challenge you, as reasonable people, to, to do a straight and complete ballot. You begin to vote on October the 7th. So here's why. 
So right now, we all know how they've worked against Trump. And what has been the push? Look at the candidate. We don't like his clothes. His hair is funny. He's an orange man. We don't like his accent. He said something about grabbing something somewhere 15 years ago now, and we don't like that. We don't like Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, Trump is the candidate for president for the Republican Party. I didn't used to like Martha. <clears throat> I still didn't, and I did not vote for her in the primary because I, did, I wanted somebody that's more like a Tea Party person. That was Dan. So I liked that. I liked him. But you know what? It doesn't make any difference. And here's why. They want you especially to think about the candidates. They want you to think about Biden being a nice guy. He can't remember how to get down the hallway, but he's a nice guy. And we, so we love him. Oh, he's all those years, he's so huggable. Oh, wait a minute, he isn't huggable anymore. That's changed here. But they want you to think about the candidate. But the candidate isn't the issue. Here's what the issue is. And it's really right in front of us, but so easy to forget because you're bombarded day after day four years, 24-7, about what the candidate is that you're supposed to like or not like. But here's what's really going on in the election. What we're going to do is, we're going to represent a team of people that will put in a plan. It's going to be a team of people. It's going to be Democrats or Republicans, or a mix of them, that are going to fill in every seat in our government across the country. City, county, state, right up to the federal government, and that's what, it's going to be a team of people. And behind each one of those people is a plan. That's what they really represent, is the plan that their party has. And so what we're going to talk about is, we're going to drill that home. And so you can see how important it is to forget about the candidates. The primary is just a goodbye. It's history. The people that are up to be teams is decided. So if I'm a football coach, and I've got my team here that I can play for the game against the Democrats team over there, I can't say, oh, if we're going to elect my team that I'm going to be the coach of. If you don't support Martha McSally or Donald Trump or whoever it is on the Republican ticket, they're going to have the opportunity to put their person in that spot and make it less likely that our team will win the game. That's really what it nets out to. So they don't want you thinking about the plan or their platform. Just think about the candidates, because we've taught you to hate, not the people in this room, they wish they could, but they've taught millions of people to hate Donald Trump. And here's how it works with brainwashing. I was with, uh, uh, in 2012, when Newt Gingrich was running. I was in the back with Newt, because I did different things and whatever. So I'm talking to him. We come out front, I'm sitting here, and here's Newt, and he's talking. And some woman says to him, you know, Speaker Gingrich, I, I'm not sure we should have you running because look at all of your baggage. And he said to her, very nice, he said, ma'am, uh, would you tell me what baggage I have? And she's standing out there and she looks at him and she didn't know what to say. Now the room is packed. There are 300 people, 400 probably in a room this size or less. And she couldn't speak. She did, she's thinking. She goes, I mean, just one example of my baggage? And he said, ma'am, I'm not going to keep you on the spot anymore. You can't name the baggage I have because you're the victim of what my staff has done, counted 24,000 advertisements that have been run against me in the last couple of years because they're afraid that I would be a viable candidate for president. And he would have been. They had to cancel him. The cancel culture has been going on for a while, and they spent a lot of money to do it. And they've been trying to do it to Donald Trump for four years now. And they're going to see if it paid off. But that's what it was about. So that's what they did to Gingrich. That's why he didn't have a shot at being president. Would he have been a better candidate than Romney? I personally think so. I was all about Gingrich. But I voted for Romney, of course, because he became our candidate. So it's that way in this election. So if we look at the plans, and that's what we're going to do now, what are the plans? I'm going to refresh your memory because you don't hear it much. You got bits and pieces. We want to confirm this in your mind. So let's look at, oh, I point here, right? Shana? Yes. Am I doing this right? I'm trying to change it. Go forward? Yes. Ah, I press backwards. Thank you. Okay. 
So if we look at each one of the items, I'm going to use this pointer. If we look at each one of the items. Let's look at the Constitution. And we're not, going to, we're not going to use any labels right now. We're just going to say as Americans, let's look at the plans. There's a group pushing plan A, and there's a group pushing plan B. And under the Constitution, we got one group that wants to continue to follow and achieve the Constitution's goals, including all to be treated the same. Imagine that. And promote freedom and control by the citizens, protect and defend all religions. Well, that sounds a pretty good plan to me. What's plan B? Well, these people want to ignore or change the Constitution. They want to remove the right to bear arms, or some parts of it. And they want to allow free speech, but only for selected items and people. And they want to promote socialism and the control of all by government, and they attack Christianity. They actually have that as a plan for our country. Our city, every city, every state, every county, the nation. That's what they want. And, they, and now, when I used to say this four years ago, five years ago, or I even wrote about this in my book, which I'll flash quickly because it's a sales opportunity. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a Catholic too. So I wrote this book called Ruling the Elite. And uh, when I wrote about the Democrats being the Socialist Party of America, people said, well, why would you say that about the Democrats? And I, so the evidence is in the book. At the time I wrote this, 65 people in Congress were also members of the Democratic Socialists of America, the largest socialist group in the United States. And they were in our Congress. But the media doesn't tell you that. And unfortunately, a lot of establishment people don't tell you that. But the Tea Party people have been telling you that for a long time. So I'm glad to hear they're alive and kicking again. So that's the reality. Two plans. What else? Well, let's look at another thing. Let's look at equality. So we take our pointer and we look up here at equality. The plan A is that the government would increase the assurance of equality of opportunity for all. Whereas, as we know, there's another group pushing equality, whereas the government is to control. I don't know how that happened. I push, we're pushing ahead. We're, okay, there we go. So um, I pushed not the pointer. Equality, government to control all aspects of the nation and ensure equal outcome for everyone. Now think that what that would take if the government was to guarantee an outcome for everyone. It's an impossibility, but it sounds dystopian. It's a utopian dream. And that's what the totalitarians have been telling people all these years. That's what Marx told people back in the 1800s. Really, this will work. It hasn't worked. It's only worked in the last century. It killed an estimated 100 million people got killed for that idea. Because people like you and me said, that ain't happening. And they tried to push it anyway. <clears throat> and Mussolini, Hitler, uh, all, the, all the people in Asia, Chinese, it's been, that's the truth. And, and unfortunately, the left doesn't let most people know it. Look what they want on taxes. We know this. Trump's been talking about it. He was talking about it last night. Taxes on individuals. Keep them low so people can keep more of their money. Why? To spend for themselves or build wealth? To what do? New businesses? Set up their retirement? And have private sector jobs, not government jobs. Jobs where you really work. Do you remember when Obama said that government workers were the best... Federal workers in the United States were the best workers in the world. He actually said that, having never worked in the private sector himself. I'm sure that's all he knew. Seems like with all that Nobel Prize and stuff, you ought to do better than that, but I'm just saying. Okay. So, and by the way, there was some great commentary today talking about um, the demagoguery of Barack Obama. Obviously, I've never been a fan of Barack Obama. I'd like to meet him. Seems like he'd be a nice guy to talk to, but I probably wouldn't trade spit to go across the street and meet him. But nonetheless, he'd probably be okay to talk to. But they were talking about his demagoguery. The way he attacked the president last week during the Democratic Convention, most of us that are older know that has never happened before. You've never seen that happen by any president on either side. That is an outrage what he did. Total demagoguery, trying to make people get, 
not go to the reason and the truth, but believe lies through emotion. <clears throat> That's what they all do. He's the king of all demagogues. The worst the United States has ever seen. And I, I'm, it's shameful that he would do that, but obviously he did. Well, taxes on corporations, because that's another big point, especially in this time of recovery. I'm going to go back again. I keep going. I keep pressing the wrong button. I'm just giving you a view of the future. Okay. So taxes on corporations. We want to keep them low so that businesses can recover. We've had a terrible hit here. We need them to recover because that's where jobs come from before. And we had the greatest, by all people in the world, talked about the United States had the greatest economy that any nation had ever had in history going into the COVID crisis. And who built that? Trump led the way. He said he would do it. And everybody goes, well, he'll never do that. You can't go over him. Come on, Charlie. And he not only won, but he did it. And he's doing it again. Today, I talked to my own financial advisor. I said, what do you think is going to happen in the election? He said, well, right now, our, this is one of the largest uh, financial companies in the United States. He said, our company is saying that they're, they're looking for a V-shaped recovery and that they expect 2020 to be a good year and 2021 to be out of sight. It's all recovery. It's going to go back where it was and go on from there. So everything's coming in place for that. And the guy who led it before, I think, should lead it again. And we know that Plan B, they want taxes on corporations to increase so that the government has more money to spend on what it values, which are probably not what any of us value. I'm just saying. I think so. So let's look ahead. And then there's the whole idea of fairness. You hear that all the time? So fairness, Plan A, they want the government to apply the law equally and consistently on all citizens. Isn't that what we've come to expect in our lifetimes? You're a lot younger, right? I'm going for it. You're younger. I know you're younger. <laughs> so, but what we've come to expect in this country is that everybody gets treated fairly and equally. It's been the hallmark of what our country is. We were alive when, in 64 when the civil rights laws passed, how, what a, a boost that was to be, what a struggle it was. We remember the civil rights riots. We've seen this all, and it's been going on for centuries, and it's always gotten better. But these guys, uh, thank God. These guys want government to apply the law to according to the identity of citizens. And I don't know if you know this, but this is true, so I'll pass it on, so you'll be able to pass it on. The Senate in California already passed a new law, the, the elimination of part of the their state constitution against discrimination. <clears throat> I know it's going to sound fantastic, but it's true. For California, right? And they're moving here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, this, they want to take out of their constitution, probably the best discrimination law in the whole United States, which says you cannot discriminate against or in, in favor of anyone based on their personal identity. And they just voted to take that out of their constitution. Now, I just want you to think, man. Now, why would that be? Who has an idea? Black Lives Matter. Okay, which means what? White Lives Matter less. Dude, we can say it. We have to. It's time for white people to stand up and say, that's just BS, man. Because I really believe that white people in America, and I've traveled a lot, are the least racist people in the world. It's unbelievable how we've done this and taught ourselves. Yes, ma'am. We're not just talking about discrimination based on the same color. We're talking about political affiliation. Yes. Yes, all that's true. All that could be. Yes, of course that will come. But the stuff we know right now they're willing to do is on your personal identity. They're already willing to do that. And they already are doing that. <laughs> Exactly, they did the Jews in Germany, and I suppose as a white person, I'm going to have to wear some sort of yellow marker, so, or a yellow cross. He's a Christian. Don't talk to him. Yeah. Well, I hope not. But these are totalitarians, so you can't put anything back. You just can't. I, I wish we could, but we can't. 
and they are talking about skin color. But you're right about the other points too. They, they want to, uh, in many ways. But in skin color, the Plan A people want government to continue refining the goal to treat all people the same, with no special treatment for skin color or other identities. Now that isn't happening right now, and most of us have watched for the last 40 years or more that you're likely to be discriminated against if you're white. Or, they don't say that, they say they, are, they give affordable housing or special attribution to people that have other assets than you, that's what they say. As if it's not really discriminating against other people. And what I always say to people about that is, how many people have kids? How many people have more than one kid? Okay, if you got more than one kid, you know. If you tell one kid, I'm, ta I'm taking you to Disney World, but not you, son. That you're, you can't do that. You can't discriminate in favor of someone without discriminating against someone else. It's a zero-sum game, which I write a lot about in that book. Um, let's move over to here. Moving forward. Sexual orientation and gender. Plan A wants to continue to refine equal treatment under the law. Whereas Plan B says sexual orientation and gender create more special treatment of people with special positions. That's probably the wrong word to use, but that's what's up there. What can I say? Okay, but, but that's what's happening. And to us, most of us Americans, that seems unfathomable. Why, in a country where everyone's supposed to be equal, should we treat people differently? And then you have Plan A regarding the federal law, where most states that are still part of the United States and there's some question about that, would require all states and their subdivisions to follow federal law, right? But under Plan B, they think we should allow states and their subdivisions to ignore federal law as they see fit. Do not assist in enforcing federal law or in protecting federal buildings or people. What have we seen in Portland as an example? Yeah, yes. Yeah, some people are actually saying, well, actually, these states have already left the United States. That's why they don't enforce federal law. They're just like uh, the Confederate States of America prior to the Civil War. We don't want to see that again. But you know, 19 years after its founding in 1789, we got the Constitution in place. Slavery was outlawed in the United States. Well, why did it go on? Because the Democratic states wouldn't follow the federal law. Just like now. The Democrat states wouldn't fall. Exactly. That's what's going on. So, that is where we are. That's the truth of it, and, and hopefully you'll think about these things as you go through talking to the people you know. And of course, in borders, we know that plan A is to increase the effort to control border flow. Gosh, I can't possibly do that without touching that. I get too big a thumb. All right, gosh, I know I'm trying to make you dizzy. I may just quit this, but I can't do I it. I can control it if you want. Thank you. Do that. I'll just do the border part. Are you right there? Uh, no, keep going. Go up from taxes on down. Taxes, keep going. Keep past that, past fairness, past skin color, past the sexual orientation. This is, we're reviewing this. Past federal law, and now stop on the next one. So borders. So we also know that what they want to do, what we want to do is this. What B wants to do is eliminate border control, allowing the free flow of legal and illegal people and products. Now, why would anybody want to do that? Why? Yeah, why would they want to do that? Come on, Shirley. It's somebody's money and power. And, and votes. You get them here, then you make them citizens, which they're all don't want to do. We're not going to do that. No. It's like you don't want the DACA people to vote? Yeah, of course not. And you're not going to take guns away either. No, no. Okay. So, I don't trust them. Oh, yeah. Now we'll go to, illegal, to illegals, so you have to go back one for me. Thank you, Sean. So they want to deny citizenship to most people in Plan A, not having legal status, and not allow them to input into our elections, nor to qualify for citizens' benefits, which encourages more people to come. The Plan B, they want to give citizenship to all people not having legal status, and allow them to qualify for benefits and use them to build party control over our government. So. Now, that, that's sad enough, except the worst part is they continue to use, they continue to use 11 to 12 million, when everybody in here knows it's probably 20 to 30 million. So let's get a commitment, they'll say, to giving them health care to illegals, because they're only 11 million. I'm sorry, 
That's an awful lot. But it's actually at least double, maybe triple that number. Do you know how many people live in Mexico? Do you know how many Mexicans there are? Just a little, little between 100 and 110 million. So what we're saying is, somewhere between 10 and 30 percent of all Mexican citizens live illegally inside the United States. How did it come to this? Do you know how? It's the same party that represents Plan B, trying to move ahead even more. Shana? So healthcare, they know in Plan A that, that uh, gosh darn it, Shana. Is that you? <laughs> Hold on. Go back to healthcare, okay, thank you. Realizing that Medicare, Medicaid, and the VA are all financial disasters, and they're run by the government. They don't work financially, it's bad. So most, a lot of people have Medicare and depend upon it. So what do they want to do? They want everyone to join an already financially failing, we know the day and year it's going to go, Medicare, and include free health care for the, less, the, the estimated 11 to 30 million. How does that possibly work? It does not work. None of these things work. So just keep your eye on the candidate, though. Joe's a nice guy. Oh, that Democratic city councilman, he's a nice woman. She's a nice guy. Well, he may be a nice woman. We don't know. <laughs> I don't know who's running here. So, but that's what they want you to keep your eye on. Don't look there. Don't look at what we're pushing. Don't look for our plan for America. Look at our candidates. Aren't they pretty? Aren't they nice? They're so great. Don't they talk well? But look what they're going to do. That's what it's about. Shauna, education. Continue to increase funding and opportunities in education to allow the expansion of charter or private schools instead of having forced attendance in public schools that don't work. What an insane thing to do. Why would you do that? Because our unions want us to. What I had hoped for when Donald Trump became president, and it was the best inauguration speech I've ever heard, but what I wanted to hear him say was, oh, and by the way, wherever there's federal money, there are no unions. Thanks. See you later. There was a time when there were no unions were allowed in government in the United States. The Democrats changed that. Now most people that are in unions are government people. And I was in the AFL-CIO, the Teamsters, after and sat. I've been in four different unions. And I can tell you from that, it's just worthless. They just take your money. I, I, I'm not a union fan at all. But what, it, and it being, you know, come out of architecture, when you do build buildings in Ohio, where I came from, all public buildings had to be built by union labor, which added 30% of the cost. And if you weren't union labor, you couldn't even compete. Nope. Not allowed. So that got changed. But it took some doing. Because that's the way they lock things up. It's, it's, it's totalitarianism. And so what they want to do is continue to increase funding and opportunities for educational expansion of charter schools. Oh, that's it. It's, what is that? So somehow when they did that, they did it double, and I didn't mean that. Obviously, they want the opposite in Plan B. So I have to talk to my Christine about that. But they, they want to not have charter schools. They want to destroy education in this country. I guess the dumber we are, the better it is for them. Sean, is there something left here? Law enforcement. Well, we know where that stands. So they want to separate peaceful protesters from the destroying anti-Americans and stop their violence and destruction of public and private property. They want to arrest and jail the guilty. What an outrage. <laughs> and they want to seek to apply all laws fairly on all citizens and protect all people. And the left, I'm sorry, Plan B people think that's just awful. You shouldn't be able to defend your home. The cops will be there in a couple of weeks. What's the hurry? What's the problem? No, no. They want to treat and refer to looters and rioters. The heck? They want to treat looters and rioters and arsonists as peaceful protesters. I actually saw the other night they showed burning buildings in the background and the commentator, I go over to CNN to see what they're saying, to check it's awful. And you'll never, it's very difficult to find them not talking about something negative about Republicans. There's never anything positive. Do you remember when CNN was really great? It was, 24-hour news, worldwide, it was an unbelievable thing. 
No, they're just, if you think, as I've probably said in this crowd before, I know I have you, Shirley, if you think the Democratic media, the media is biased, it's not biased at all. It's part of the Democratic Party. It's no different than the unions. It shouldn't be tolerated, but it is. And they want to apply law inconsistently to favor supporters of Plan B. And they want to selectively protect their own. They're literally protecting rioters in the street from people like you and me. It's okay to burn the cities. And you know what? If they get control, if Joe wins, who do you think is going to pay for all this damage? You and me. Every one of those cities and the states will come for billions and billions of dollars. So they're looking at it going, we're not paying for this. Let it roll. Burn it down, baby. It's an outrage. But that's what totalitarianism is. It is an outrage. It is an outrage. We'll go to this last slide, Sean. In summary, we need to vote, and these are the key words, we need to vote a straight and complete ballot for the entire Republican team. They represent the plan that we support, the American plan, not the anti-American plan. And that is clearly what we're up against. The plan that candidates represent is far more important than who the individual is. Voting a straight ticket and a complete ballot for those supporting our favorite plan for America is the best way to amplify the meaning of your vote in this coming election. And everyone in your family, your kids, grandkids, your neighbors. Straight and complete, friends. If you get a ballot in the hands of a Republican, that's what we need. Make every vote count. We don't want to skip over. We want to eliminate that kind of thing where the governor would get 155,000, but our candidate for senator gets 155,000 less than the governor did. Those are Republicans or pro-Republicans pro who didn't go over to McSally. It doesn't make any difference now. Whatever our favorites were, those houses, those horses are back in the barn. The team up for election is set. We must, some people say hold their nose, but the other thing to look at is we're glad someone is there. Someone that's going to represent that plan, plan A. Someone that's going to be expected to support the president. Someone. Someone. Now it may not be as good as, it may be more like Jeff Lake. Talk about a disappointment. It may be more like John Kasich, who I supported his first run. I used to have lunch together with John all the time. We were in Young Republicans together. And here's John. Well, I can't, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. He's, something happened to him. Something happened. He, he, he lost his mind. I don't know. He was a good guy. Uh, so it's up to us to make that happen. So Bob's going to talk about uh, a few reminders of what it's like, what can happen if we don't do this. Every one of us have to do this, straight and complete. And if you're doing golden tickets up here, I'd ask you to put straight and complete on. We want people to understand that's the expectation. We don't want you just to vote. We want you to have a completely straight Republican ticket and fill it in completely, straight and complete. That will garner us tens of thousands of votes that we missed in the last election all over this state. Straight and complete. Bob? So once again, Bob Hawthorne is another LD23 guy. He's worked at it so hard so long, you'd never think he's actually only 40 years old. But that's how hard he's worked. He's worked hard for a long time. Oh, my glasses. No, you did. And as, as a young man, he found his glasses. He didn't know where they were for a minute. I got the same problem. Bob, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for inviting Tim up here. Uh, as always, he does an absolutely outstanding job. He's the great, I call him the wordsmith uh, because he's very good with words. He really is. Uh, he brought up the national popular vote. I'll take one, just one minute, so that you really know what actually happened. Approximately 20 re Rhino Republicans got on board and supported the national popular vote. I won't get into all the details, but it passed the House, House Bill 2456, in February, week of February 2nd, 2016. 
We knew this was really a bad deal, but let me tell you, it was. It would have passed the Senate. There's no two ways about it. It would have passed the Senate. So I talked to my friend Jim O'Connor and we talked about it. So I picked up the phone and called Andy. Never met him, never talked to him, didn't know him from a hell of beans, but he was president of the Senate, explained what we were concerned about. He says, okay, come on down, you got 15 minutes. We spent an hour and 15 minutes with him. And what came out of it, quickly, is that Andy said, look, I do not like it. I do believe it's unconstitutional. But he said to me, and to Jim, I have over 100 letters in my desk here supporting the national popular vote and at the time we all knew where it came from. So at the end of the discussion, Jim and I left and we looked at each other and said, we know what we have to do. At the time, Jim was chair of LD23, so he had contact with every uh, LD chair in the state. So Jim contacted every one of them, and I contacted a lot of people. Within two weeks, Andy had over 200 letters on his desk opposing the national popular vote, and he took the Senate bill, put it in his drawer, and that was that. And that is the story as to what happened. Good this evening. I hope that you listen very carefully to what Tim had to say, because Tim had a lot to say here. The issue is, the question is, not what happens if we win. The question is, what happens if we lose? That's the question. So, I sat down a couple months ago and I started just writing and Tim, I, Tim knows this. And I just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and every time I had an idea or something or something on TV or whatever it was, I would write it down. So I have it here. I'm not going to get it because I could spend an hour on it. But there's some very key issues in here. Last week, we had our LD23 meeting and Martha McSally actually came to it. And as she, to her credit, did an absolutely outstanding job. And in her presentation, she discussed, I don't know what, 12, 15 points? Uh, what happens if we lose the United States Senate? Every one of those 12 to 15 points plus 25 others are right here. And I'm happy to send it to, to uh, Ms. Dye here. Uh, and you can distribute it out if you like it. If you don't, you can put it in your drawer. <laughs> and that'll be that. But I think there's a lot of great ideas in here. But let me just quickly rattle off. It'll be done in three minutes and I'll get out of here. What happens if we lose? So here's a few points of interest that I uh, dug out really of an article from Real Clear Politics and plus some of my own thinking. I'll rattle them off quickly. We won't get into the depth. Biden promises on his first day of office to give citizenship, free health care insurance, go up to 22 million undocumented immigrants, i.e. illegals, and there will be zero border control. Democrat National Platform promises to stand against state voter ID requirements and cleaning up voter registration rolls. They also propose to make the United States the only country in the world to mandate mail-in balloting. Democrats promised statehood to Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico, thereby ensuring four new senators, all Democrats. They could even propose a new fairness doctrine, which you've all heard a lot about, that would eliminate conservative talk radio. Very real possibility they could pull this up. Democrats could quickly create legislation expanding the number of seats on the courts, ensuring massive judicial majorities on every circuit court. These judicial majorities would ensure that all of the Democrats' new laws pass constitutional muster. 
for it all us military guys. Democrat, obviously, destruction of the Second Amendment. Free speech would no longer be free. Any so-called free speech from a conservative point of view will now be considered hateful speech and would be criminalized. And you'll go to jail for it if they get their way. Ballot harvesting would become commonplace in every state. Hello, New Green Deal. Democrats now believe they could so fundamentally change the voting rules that they won't even have to worry about Republicans getting back in power. If Biden wins and Democrats control the Senate, this country, not May, will become totally unrecognizable. So hence, that's the reason that it was important to really pay attention to what Tim had to say. Now, I do have just a couple of quick issues, and I'll get out of here on, on some things that I've got in here, just to give you an idea. Uh, and when we can talk about anything that you want to talk about. Um, I talk about, if you want techies controlling free speech, vote for the Democrats. As you can say, I have a lot to pay. Mark it up. I'm just going to fly. Uh, if you want to make a weak military, vote Democrat. If you want your retirement destroyed, vote Democrat. August 4th, 2020, Revolutionary Communist Party leader endorsed Biden for president. If you support the Communist Party, vote for them. Vote Democrat. The young people you see looting today, they're nothing but pawns for these people, being supported by Soros, etc. These radical Democrats attacked the police officers attempting to quell violence created by the radical Democrats. Okay. Now, one last point. Very interesting uh, article I got from uh, Larry Young, president of Bill State, where he talked about the Betsy Ross flag. The Betsy Ross flag, 13 stars, 13 stripes, representing obviously the colonies, representing our founding era. But what happened a year ago? Nike and Colin Kaepernick decided that the Betsy Ross flag was a symbol of racism and slavery. How ridiculous. But they buried the shoe, and that was that. The shoe itself was, like, the shoe itself was trivial, but points to something else. What is not trivial is the push to insert anti-American ideology into every aspect of American life. Remember that sentence. What is not trivial is to push, is to insert anti-American ideology into every aspect of American life. And where does it come from? Our educational system. It starts in kindergarten. And this is what they sell. And until we clean up that mess, this thing is not going to stop. Under the cover of academic freedom, the left schemes to wipe out all things that make America exceptional. One other point. Al Shanker, president of the American Federation of Teachers. When school children start paying union dues, that's when I'll start representing the interests of school children. In short, it's about the adults, not the children. A coalition of teachers unions has joined forces with the Democratic Socialists of America and have called for a uh, national day of protest, which was the first week in August, August 3rd, 
to push their non-negotiable interests. RE demands for school reopening. I've got a hundred others here, and I can go on and on. All I'm trying to do is support what Tim had to say. This is about representing our team. It's that simple. Tim said it loud and clear. It's the team. It's the team. And you have to support everybody in the team. If your person lost, so be it. It's done and it's over. Like Tim said, our biggest issue, let's be honest about it, in the state is Martha McSally. Our biggest issue in the country is protecting the majority in the United States Senate because if we lose the Senate, this is what you're going to lose. Bob, did you mention about ending uh, the filibuster that that's what they want to do too? Yeah, uh, the filibuster. The filibuster, of course, protects bills that the opposition is not in favor of, which means a person like Tim can get up and talk for 24 straight hours and kill a bill. But they'll kill the bill, but then it requires a supermajority of 60 on most on a lot of these bills. If they kill a filibuster, it automatically Statutes will be passed with 50% plus one. And then they'll load up the judicial system. And like I said, now all of their laws will pass muster. And then a couple of other things. Did you, I, I stepped out of the restrooms, did you also mention hacking the Supreme Court as well as the Circuit Court? Well, they will, what they'll do, they will expand the number of people on the Circuit Courts and or the Supreme Court vote. Yeah, it's called packing, and some yeah. of you may remember that FDR wanted to do that. Yes, he, he did. At the last minute, he was, he was trying yeah, to. He got shut down. So essentially, what what we're saying is they're going to make this a one-party nation. That's the objective. So all those people who have been critical, of people like Bob and I and other Tea Party people for some time, going, we have to go after their leadership. If we don't go after their leadership, we can't stop them. But if, Unfortunately, a lot of establishment people have gone, you know, oh, that's, that's a step too far. Uh -huh. But the reality is, look what they've been doing to us. Mm -hmm. Look how many leaders they've taken out. Okay. One by one, not only the Gingrich thing that I mentioned, but everything since. Right. Look at the general, look at Stone. I mean, they're after the leadership. Right. And they've been trying to drag Donald Trump with every lie known to humankind. Yeah. Let, so me support part, one part. Yeah, let me support what Tim's saying. California, our neighbor. And what happens in California will come here. They are a one-party dictatorship. Yes, sir. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, Kimberly Goldfoyle that you saw last night at the convention, she screams a lot. She is. I, when she was here February 3rd, I was it, one of the people, like a lot of LD23 people, uh, Microphone. in the VIP section for uh, the event. And Microphone. Microphone. Oh, despite what they told you, I'm sorry. Despite what they told you, it was a packed event in February when Donald Trump was there. I know because I was in charge of packing it and turning people away. And we had every seat in that 14,000 square foot, or 14,000 person arena done. And I had a woman who came up to me the next day and said, I'm sorry, I'm so hoarse. I, you know, it was packed last night. And, and she said to me, honestly, this is it. This is what you can see sometimes in brainwashed people. She said, why would you say that? Come on the phone for Say what? She said that there were 14,000 people there. It only holds 3,000. I'm going, what the heck? <laughs> I'm going, was I, what? So I get it on my, I'm on the internet. I, no, I, I was right, it's 14,000. You know, just look it up. It wasn't 14,000. Why are you saying that? I'm going, oh my gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're up against. It's, it, there's been a serious brainwashing. This is like Tiananmen Square, only it's in Washington, D.C. We got trouble, man. We do. Yeah, yeah. one last quick thing, and then any, any questions for Jim or myself? Shauna? California, California is a one party dictatorship. I don't know how much you know about how they vote in California, but they have it, what they call top two. 
and they run as unaffiliated, be it for governor, secretary of state, education, attorney general, everything. Well, let me tell you, every Democrat knows who's on that ticket. And at the primary, there will be two Democrats, the top two. The top two vote-getters in the primary will be on the general, and they will both be Democrats. We were there when they passed that law. Yeah. Oh. Are you a California refugee? Yes. Two and a half years. Yeah. So, so uh, you know. And so therefore, right now, thank God for Linda Payne, who handles the election integrity program of California, and she's doing a fabulous job. And she's also helping Arizona. She's in there helping us. Who? She was here, yes. Yeah. Linda Payne was here at our party. Yeah, she's she's a yeah, she's a great lady. And then just one last thing. Virginia, last November, hit the trifecta. Yeah, we did. A radical governor, radical house, radical senate, and the first thing they put up. No voter ID, same day voter registration. Perfect. Bingo. One party. That's what they put up. One party dictatorship. So that's where we are. And again, I will forward this to you. And if you want to hand it out, fine. But I'll tell you, I got 40 arguments right here that are pretty solid. So uh, if you have any questions, okay, fire yeah. away. Let me just finish up first. Sure. All right. I, was, I, was we'll have some I was requested to say something first. I was assuming everybody here knew what an LD was. I've been talking about LDs. So the entire state, every state, is divided into legislative districts. And in those legislative districts, that's where your representatives for the state house come from. The representative you have assigned for this, you have two representatives and one senator from every LD. So the cities, the state, everything is divided up into legislative districts. And the people that represent the party inside those districts are PCs, precinct committeemen. So then, and those people, you have to, if you're a PC, then you become a state committeeman too, an SEC, which I know Shirley is, I am, Bob is. So there's, a, that's the way it works. It's a hierarchy of things. So we'll have questions. Bob, that, she wants a copy of this to take back to the local party headquarters. So if you didn't, wouldn't mind getting that to her, that would be. Give me your email. Okay, and, and I can give you a digital of this thing too, the straight and complete, if you want it. So I'll get, the, I'll get it from Bob. Do you have any other questions? Got a comment. Okay, please. Okay. Three. You're talking about, uh, you're talking about the one-party state. Uh, they use the Ninth Circuit as their enforcer. Oh, yes, absolutely. So that's why appointing judges, conservative judges, is so important. Yes. We've got to flip that circuit or and that circuit's come around because of some stuff that Trump's done. Right. But they're going to take right. that back. We can't do it if we have that difference. That's right. Exactly. Oh, and one thing, I, was, I mentioned Kimberly Guilfoyle. What I meant to say, didn't finish, was that Kimberly Guilfoyle was married to Governor Newsom in California. Yeah. Yep. Now she's dating Donald Trump's son. Now think about that. It's a great world. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So that's a good thing. Any other questions? Okay, who has questions? Okay, here's April. April? Thank you. What do you, and, and anyone here who has ideas, what do you suggest to get these, uh, to get this idea of the straight and complete ticket out okay. to people? I mean, everyone here, probably most, the majority here understand. But you understand, you get it. So uh, I'm going to have a piece available. You will have it. I give you a digital copy of this. So you can supply everybody from party headquarters. You'd be able to get a digital copy of this that you can send out. So it's this with the words in front too. It's not real long, a couple pages long, and you can you can change it if you like. But it but narrow it down so that people can see it. I'm also looking at doing a tape like I've done for other things, because I I've done a lot of video work and stuff, and then pushing that out so people can get it and even see it be said. So that's what we want. Push it straight and complete. It's easy to remember. We're having a Hill County Republican Committee meeting Thursday, and we will put this on the agenda. No, we don't have it. No, not yet. We, we may put one up too. So this is actually the first time we brought this out. So we just got this out this this week. 
And so when Shirley Collis said, well, do you mind if Bob and I come and tell you this important information that you'll need to know? This is really critical stuff. <coughs> That's correct. Yeah, well, there Actually, there's, um, you should find out. if you are on Heritage Action for America, which I am, they report who those 25 are. On Heritage Action? Yeah. Bob's been a big contributor member of Heritage for many years. I and a big supporter. Yeah. That's the founder. So, <laughs> but, but I get uh, emails from them probably weekly, and, and some of them I pass on to the Tea Party, and depending on you know what the content is sometimes it's just advertising their speakers coming up but if there's action items and stuff we have the action alert group within the tea party code so like there's 300 and some people on our email list that get the notices about the meetings but then there's 80 people that are on the action alert list and when jose sends out his uh thing about all the different bills that are heard that are being heard each week down in um the state capitol, then I send those out and people then can contact uh, all of our legislators and say, eh, I support this, I oppose this, whatever, keep it simple, but, you know, do that. The response makes a big difference to these people. It makes it, because, let me tell you this, when Sylvia Allen was in the Senate this last two years, she said that the Democrats send in like five times the number of comments because their unions, especially the teachers unions and the people with the Obama phones, they get a text that says, click this link and make your comment, vote no against this bill, vote yes against this bill. They have such an organization. And half the time when I send out those action alerts, people go, eh, you know, well, maybe I'll comment on one. Maybe, and maybe I'll get around to it, and then the week is over. And, you know. It does count. And that's, does that's count. exactly why the national popular vote didn't pass, because all those letters came in. So it makes a difference. And we had Sylvia Allen up, got 75 people up, because she had been to the Tea Party, and she said she was supporting it, and all of us went, eh, I don't know about this. So we talked amongst the board members, and then we got people from the Republican Club and the Tea Party Great. down to a special meeting. And finally, at the end of the meeting, I mean, it was really good. We touched the, the pros and cons. Finally, at the end of the meeting, she says, all right, I won't vote for it. Because she was listening to her tea. That's why we have a republic. We, they represent us. But if you don't connect with them and tell them what you think, then now listen to somebody else who may not. Yeah, that the one you just said. They represent us under constitutional rule of law. Right. And that's the difference between a republic and a democracy. We have to understand the difference between a republic and a democracy. We have 50 democracies. They're called states. But it's the states are protected by the republic, meaning the constitution. That's it. That's the way it works. Okay, any other questions? Thank you all for coming. All righty, so I'd like Brenda Barton to come up here, tell you what she's been up to now, and for about uh, you know, 15 minutes, and then we'll go and um, answer questions from her, for her. <laughs> well, you know what, this has been a really good um, presentation. I wish this place was packed, um, you know, so, um, it's going to come back. It's just people are getting used to it now, and things are kind of moving along. And of course, Arizona businesses, we need to open up. We need to make sure our kids are going to school. Uh, we've got a lot of things in place to protect teachers, to protect the students, to protect the workers at school and businesses. And uh, we need to get back to work and uh, earn some money. Put some money in our pocketbooks. Uh, and the businesses need to recover from being shut down all of these months and months ridiculous horrid horrid um, so disappointed that uh, it's been shut down this much and uh, a lot of the uh, executive orders that have come out 
uh, these executive orders were um, really designed or implemented and they really said you're the winner and you're the loser it's really a shame some of the uh, businesses that were restaurants and happened to also serve uh, alcohol uh, they were shut down but the casinos were open and they served food and alcohol and gambling and all that other stuff they, they, it wasn't handled equally so uh, we, we do have uh, the idea that laws should be equally enforced I think this is we're, we're still uh, a constitutional republic and we still have things that are in place although uh, you know what we're, we're losing them pretty fast we're losing them really fast and uh, this generation of ours you can see all you folks in here you're not my generation but the point is we, we still remember how we were taught about the Constitution and what it meant and our state constitutions and the the information for our state laws and how they were put together but it wasn't passed on to the next generation the next generation doesn't have that same feeling of America and that we are a special country we were not created like all the other countries in the entire world the other countries were all created by war and conquest of kings fighting other kings and we were not designed that way the pilgrims came over here they were Christians and they were looking for freedom to worship God and not to be told by a government church how they had to worship and this is the only way you can worship America was established on the principles of freedom of religion and everything else came from there everything else flowed from freedom of religion so it's important that we remember who we are how we started and what it means to be an American and the education system we need to really get some folks to work and work in our schools we need to get some folks elected to our school boards that really remember what it is and know what it is to be an American so we can teach this and pass this on to our children I don't think it's too late if, we, if enough of us stand up strong look at the silent majority has got to stop being silent that's basically what I'm saying you have got to stop being silent your silence is acquiescing to the Marxism takeover of our country that means that if we speak up somebody might uh, get in our face and tell us off they might uh, get in our face and call us everything but Americans. There's a lot of people that have sacrificed a lot more than that to be an American. So, remember, we're talking about what, what we're going to do a golden ticket. And we're going to do the golden ticket for each of the LDs. Uh, so that uh, the legislative districts uh, that he was talking about and we're going to put those together so that you'll understand what your Republican team is and who they are so that when you go to the ballot box you will know all the way down top to bottom everyone that is a Republican we need you to vote for them so you need to vote for two representatives in your in your for your house I'm one of the candidates running. Walt Blackman is the other one. Wendy Rogers won the primary. She's a Republican. She will be on the ballot. And you need to vote for Wendy Rogers because she's a Republican. We need to vote for every Republican on the ballot. As it was said, it's not personalities. It's the team. It's the team. Look, some of those... Uh, guys out there in the military they actually have no man left behind okay that's the teamwork this is where we are this is where we are we are in a war but it's a political war so we have got to band together come together for the team and we've got to make sure we get across the finish line we we have to get across the finish line so 
Okay. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. You had a fabulous quote, and I'm trying to write it down. Uh, it was so well said. It's something about your silence is acquiescing to the Marxist agenda, something. Do you think you can say, say it again? It's, it's on the video. <laughs> but it is true. Our, our silence, we are acquiescing to the Marxist movement in this country at every level, from education to dog catcher, okay? Everything is, is going in that direction because we have been silent for so long. We haven't been members of a school board. You know, the school board decides what the teacher pay is. The legislature does not decide what teacher pay is. All we do is we give block funding to the Department of Education and they distributed it to the school boards. The school board decides the amount of money for the teachers, for the bus drivers, for the janitors, everyone within the school is their responsibility. So if you don't like it, you need to run for the school board. I was on the school board for six years. Yeah, that's good job. Well, the thing was, she was only, there was only one of them. You need the majority on that school board. Thank you, Brenda. Some of us here may not know this. Uh, I was in Australia from 1970 to 1974. I came back to the United States and was appalled to discover that Australia, being a socialist country, I thought, why are, our, why are we hurtling down the same path they were on? And I've been studying the Constitution and what's going on in our world ever since, and I can guarantee you what you just said about the communist takeover, the Marxist revolution, is exactly correct. It's been investing our country as a communist insurgency since common term in the 1920s. They've invested and infiltrated every major institution of the United States government and most private, private institutions as well. What's happening now is not an accident. It's not just random events. It is a plan. It is a second Bolshevik revolution. That's exactly what it is. And it, I expect, frankly, I expect it to go hot in October because that's their favorite month for running revolutions. So be prepared and don't vote for anybody but a Republican. It's the only chance we've got. Yes, it, it's, a grand, it's a grand plan. And it's been laid out for, as you say, many years. I know that in a study that I've done uh, back in the 20s, these things were starting to happen. And we had a great immigration influx from Eastern European uh, immigrants uh, coming into uh, the United States. And, uh, of course, they brought a lot of their ideas. They were coming because they wanted to be free, but they didn't leave all of those communist ideas behind. So we... Look, we have the same thing happening with the California influx. Uh, we, they have got to leave those ideas behind, but it's hard to do when they've had those ideas drilled into them their whole life. Their whole life, if they've lived there for very long, uh, and, and they don't necessarily think it's a bad idea for the government to provide this and the government to take care of it. But who is the government? It's us. They come after us and our money to pay for their grand schemes. It's not right. And it's not the American way. This is, um, so, dear, I know that this, this all sounds pretty hopeless, you know? Like right now, you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, how are we going to get out of this? Well, the first step happens at the beginning of October, October 7th, when you start to vote. That's the one thing, as of right now. Now, they're trying to mess with it. Of course, they're trying to mess with the post office and everything else. They, they're setting us up to have a fight for the election, even if we win it. Right. It's not going to stop. So if you got enough ammo, you'll get through it. When I went to the gun store today, man, they're slim pickings. Yes. I mean, literally, the guy told me they're getting ready for the election. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I hate to report that, mm -hmm. but 
this is what's up. People are down for it. And, and I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. But we got a chance, if we vote the right way, of tamping it down. We can't let just give up. Now, in the, in the long term, future, long term, if we can take control, if conservatives can get back in, if pro-Americans can get back in control of their own government, and they're going to try to stop us, they only want one party. One of the reasons why you're silenced is because you've been silenced. You've been silenced. All the news media, used to, that's all gone. It's all propaganda now. You're lucky there's any Fox left. They don't want you to talk. They won't let you. You go on campus, you got 10 square feet on 600 acres at Ohio State where you're allowed to talk your mind. Other than that, shut the hell up. That's the way it is. Totally different than I was there, but that's what they're teaching. But what I wrote about in my book is, and I'm not selling the book here, although it is on Amazon. I like Amazon. But it's on Amazon. But the point of it is, there's a recipe in here. And one of the things that I put in here when I wrote this book was, if we get control of the government again, we could make it so that we had to have certified news. Yeah. That is, it has to be truthful news or you can't tell it. Yes. You can, we had, they're in here, we put it as a possible amendment to put in that if you're a socialist, you cannot serve or be appointed to any part of the United States government, whatever. Today, we have all the communists inside our government driving the daggone ship. We let it happen. Do you think you could go to communist China and they'd let you serve in their government? No way. Or any other place. But we've allowed this because we've been good and trusting. If we get it back, we're going to have to be tough to keep it. Because they aim to win. That's all I'm saying. We can do it, and it starts with this election. And everything you said is right on. You're such a good representative. Thank you for all the stuff you've done. I just want to remind you that in our U.S. Constitution, in Article 4, Section 4, it says, it's about statehood, how, you know, becoming a state. It says that the federal government is supposed to ensure or guarantee that the states have a Republican form of government. It's very clear, it's not ambiguous, it's plain and simple English. A Republican form of government. So how is it we have socialist, Marxist, communist members holding office in government? Article 4 in the Section 4. Can I say one thing about that? That's a very interesting subject. Well, and then also, Article 2, Section 2 says, the purpose of government is to protect the people's rights, and all government is, uh, I don't have it quoted exactly, but the people are the ones that are the government. They direct. That's the uh, Arizona Constitution, not, not, not the federal. I was quoting the federal constitution, and uh, Shirley was quoting the Arizona Constitution. Yeah. What Article 4, Section 4 says? The United States government guarantees a Republican form of government to every state. That's exactly what it says. What does that mean? Exactly. That's the question. Let's define it. Well, it basically means that we, uh, like we will always have a representative form of government. Now, this does not mean that it will be it could be a democracy, which means popular vote on a plurality basis, but it also means a republic form of government, so it can be either way. I did a lot of research on this one. And, and it's, it's, it's very difficult to understand you know, what it really means. So, uh, the, you know, so well, I that's what it, it just means that we will always elect our representatives. In what form? That's up to the state. Because the state, understand, you have to understand what federalism means, and you have to understand state, uh, uh, you need state power. But even, even if you have one party, you'd still be voting. But yeah. you only have one choice, which is what yeah. isn't unusual. Right. Anymore. So representative government, to me, uh, it needs to be defined the way it was defined when we were established as a country. And remember, democracy was loathsome to our founders. Oh, yes. 
Lotham is a related to they, the, as a related to the Republic, meaning nationally. That's what it was. The, the founding fathers feared two words. When it came to the election of the president, president of the United States, those two words were democracy and factions. Right. That's what they were afraid of. And they had every right to be. Exactly. And this is exactly what you're getting at. That's right. I, one of the questions that I'd like to ask, how many people in this room believe <laughs> that there is such a thing, legally speaking, legally speaking, as the supreme law of the land? How many people believe, believe there is? Well, the U.S. Constitution. The U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Now, okay, so that's, that's what everybody said. So I, then I just... However, it's the states made the federal, the federal government created the federal So I take it one step further. People say the Constitution. So I say, okay, Treaties where does it say that in the Constitution that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land? Article because six. if it doesn't say it, then it's not. It's Article not 6 says it. Say again, Article 6 what? Article 6. It's, 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 Article it's, it's Article 6, Section 2, the Supremacy Clause. So if you'll go to Article 6, <coughs> Section 2, the Supremacy Clause, Paragraph 2 of Section 2, you will see that it states very clearly that the Constitution is indeed the supreme law of the land. But the problem but is, the problem is they only, don't care. They should only do... 20 different things, and they're doing way more than 20 different things. Well, whose fault is that? Ours. Congress. Voters. Who puts them there? Congress. We do. Voters. We do. Let me just say, during this debate, yes, we bought, voted, but we're lied to. Yes. Right. Because we're, they're allowed to lie to us. There's nothing the Constitution says you can't lie to the constituents. And so now we have socialists well, in the idea. government who ignore it. They ignore all of it. That's why we have sanctuary cities. Right? It's bad. But we got to get it back. It starts with this election. The argument about states' rights and the Supreme Operation ever since our nation was founded is a bunch of hooey. Yeah, but you, yeah, but you, you, you mentioned states' rights. You mentioned states' rights. Okay, one point. States, states do not have rights. States have power. It's state power, not state rights. So when you use state, state rights, that you can get challenged on that one. If we have state power. Well, I'm saying the Constitution says that the Article 6, that the judges in every state shall be bound thereby, because it's the Constitution of the United States, the laws or Constitution of any state notwithstanding. So the only limitation on that law that we're in, that's in discussion has to be pursuant to the U.S. Constitution for that to be true. If it's not pursuant, then the states can throw it out. But that is Article 6. Okay. Brandy, I have one last, last comment and then pick that wind it up. So what I saw just now as an observer is called re-education. Okay? So there is a communistic re-education happening all over the world, right? We need to re-educate not only ourselves, but the youth. Right. Students for Trump had 3,500 students. My son was one of them, third row, recently down in Phoenix meeting with Trump. He was in shock. The place was filled, not an empty seat. 3,500 college kids came to see him. He thought he was not liked by kids. There are kids that want the information that we're talking about that has been misconstrued, played down, watered down, and things have been thrown in, and all those lies, Tim, you were talking about, have been mingled in there just like the enemy does, right? Since the beginning in that garden. That's right. So we're seeing it, and now getting this information, even on a video, something into the hands of these homeschoolers, stay at home, not going back to school kids, getting it into the par parents' hands, getting into the teachers' hands, getting into the students' hands. There is a way to re-educate, and this is not a lost cause. And I just got a text from a woman who met some veterans at the park today who are completely fearful. 
And I said, instead of them being afraid, tell them to come to headquarters, we'll put them to work. Faith in action will turn this around. Yes. We cannot be hopeless. Action. And literally, it hasn't been given up. It, it's only given up if we give over. If we give it over. So we still have time. Yes, we do. And, but we do need to educate the youth. We have to redeem our time. Okay, just one last thing. So you, so you understand the law. Make it short. Cities can make laws, but they cannot trump state law. States can make laws, but they cannot trump federal law. Right. Federal government can make laws, but they cannot trump the Constitution. So there's the long and the short. Okay, so thank you all. Okay, Bob and Tim and Brenda. Okay, you see the video camera back there that Don has. Don has a YouTube channel and he has all of our Tea Party meetings on the YouTube channel. So you can go watch this uh, discussion again and uh, I need to get with you about, because it's posted on Tea, Pace and Tea Party posting, the link is down there, but you can't just click the link and make it go, it's difficult, so we'll well, yeah, oops, something went wrong. Oops, it says oops, something went wrong. So anyhow, so. What you can do is go to, look on YouTube, do a search for Don Klein channel. See okay, look on. up on you, go, do a search. On YouTube. On YouTube. For, for Don, Don Klein channel. Klein, C-L-I-N-E channel. And remember, the first thing you're going to get is some gynecologist who's in jail in Wisconsin. That's not me. Oh, okay. Scroll down to Don Klein's channel. Yeah, you, you see a whole bunch of videos. Yeah. So before you told me it was Don Donald Klein, it's just Don Klein. Don Klein channel. Don Klein channel. Do you run it all together in small letters, or do you Don space? Space Don space Klein space channel space. Okay. If anybody right. needs one, I have a card here with it. For the address. Okay, he's got cars. Okay, so a, a couple things I want to say. Uh, next week is September the 1st, and I have no idea how that happened. 